going away. So maybe Tim, could you just say something or Jeff or someone? Yep. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Shut up, Jeff. I'm talking. Oh. Okay. This this is this is worse. Tim, you're on fire. You're always on fire. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, we are ready to start then. So um, let's just slowly and uh, gradually slide into the slightly more formal introduction and and a huge welcome to all of you um, who. Um, uh, are here tonight. So this is our final uh, 2020 Center for Poetry and Poetics uh, poetry reading. Um, and uh, at the end of the event, I'm going to just quickly say a few words about uh, what the plans are for, for the spring. Uh, but but uh, let's wait with that for now. So uh, uh, a very special uh, final sort of Christmassy or whatever festive festive reading. Uh, this is gonna be uh, as the final event uh, with four poets who, whom I'm gonna uh, very briefly introduce in the beginning of the um, evening. Uh, as usual, uh, uh, then then the the readings will come after one another with no break at all, and. Uh, uh, each poet is going to read for about 20, 25 minutes. We'll see how it goes, but there's no rush. We've got space and time till till about eight o'clock. Um, so thank you all for coming, and 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 I'm just going to briefly introduce our readers, and this is exactly the the order they are going to be reading in as well. Um, we've got. Uh, Perhaps I could say we, we, we've had this informal little chat in the beginning of the in the beginning of the um, uh, uh, the evening when when we all met up prior to 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 allowing you to come in. Is that uh, I was just telling Adam how I met the uh, the writers. I mean, if, except Richard and Jess, of course, who, who I, I've known for years, but uh, uh, with Virna and. Uh, um, uh, and Iris, I, I met through, actually, Jeff, actually, Jess, via Jeff uh, at an eclectic reading, um, uh, I think about three or four years ago now. And then all the four of them um, uh, ended up in, in the anthology JT and I put together in 2018 uh, called Wretched Strangers. So this is a lovely sort of reunion with, with the writers from, from, from the book. Uh, as well. Um, so to introduce the uh, poets, we're going to start with uh, Jess uh, Pujol uh, Duran, who is a poet, academic and translator. She writes and translates in Catalan, English and Spanish, and edits the magazine Alba Londres. Um, she has three chapbooks in English, Now Worry, that came out uh, in 2012. Uh, by department, um, every bit of light, which came out uh, by Oyster Catcher in 2012 as well, and Mare or Me uh, that came out in 2018 by Carnival Press. Also, she has two books in Catalan, uh, El País Pinta, uh, which came out in 2015, and Nino that came out, the book, that book came out in 2019, so very recent, and also one in Spanish, excuse my very Hungarian accent, Entrares tan difícil salir, that came out by Veer in 2016, with translations uh, by William Rowe. Um, after Jess's reading, uh, we are going to pass on the platform to Virna Teixeira, who was born in Fortaleza in Brazil. Uh, she's a poet, translator, and uh, publisher. Her poetry books have been published in South America, Portugal, and the UK. A new collection of poems, My Doll and I, will be published by Pamenar Press uh, uh, soon. She's a prolific work as a translator and has published titles of Scottish, French, and South American poetry. She also translate, translates Brazilian poetry into English. She lives in London, runs a small press in the UK called Carnival Press. Um, 
you can put the two together with Jessie's book and is the editor. She's also the editor of the electronic, the electronic literary magazine Theodora. Birna is also a doctor and, and works with mental health in the NHS. Um, after Birna, we're going to hear Richard. Uh, I think both Richard and Jess read for us quite a few years ago now when, when we could do the proper uh, physical uh, uh, as opposed to these virtual events. Um, so it's a nice welcome back to, to, to both of you, by the way. Um, Richard is a poet. Richard Parker is a poet, academic editor and, and printer. His poetry publications include From the Mountain of California, uh, which came out by Open in 2010, The Traveler and the Defense of Heaven by Veer in 2012, and RTA Parker's 99 Sonnets About Evil uh, came, uh, that came out in 2015 by Canary Wolf. Wolf. His work, uh, which includes poetry about sport, uh, sport, travel, writing, and science fiction, addresses questions of place and the environment through investigations of poetic form and process. He's also the editor and printer of the award-winning Creator Press pamphlet and book series, publishing mostly letterpress pamphlets of some of the best new British poetry. He's also uh, the editor of uh, uh, the Jeff Hill, the new Jeff Hilson anthology as well, which uh, Richard, you didn't put it in down in here. Um, after the three uh, poets, we are going to finish the evening with Iris Colomb, who is an artist, poet, curator, editor, and translator ba uh, uh, based in London. Her practices merges poetry and other art forms to explore different relationships between visual and spoken forms of text. Iris has given individual, collaborative, durational and interactive performances in the UK, Germany, Austria, Romania and France at the Bucharest uh, International Poetry Festival, the U European Poetry Festival and the South Bank Centre's Poetry International Festival, among others. Um, these performances have involved human collaborators as well as metal tubes, massive spools, handheld shredders, red beans, hundreds of cigarettes, shouting over hairdryers, spitting in books and faces and turning audiences into poetry machines. So we look forward to something similar uh, tonight. So uh, really big and warm welcome to, to, the, to the four of you, to Jess, Vienna, uh, Richard and Iris, and I'm just going to pass on the, 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 the microphone or the platform to them now. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Agnes, for inviting us. And what a shame that we could not be in Sheffield. I have nice memories. Um, yeah, or being locked in a lift, not trapped in a lift. Uh, it, we had so many adventures in, so in an evening, right? Um, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> remember that. <laughs> uh, Wasn't it with Michael, Michael Kindlen? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> now we are trapped in our houses, right? <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Um, and yes, I um, want to read, I uh, have uh, around 20 minutes, and I um, want to read uh, three poems that are quite long. Um, I think it's going to be just about right. Um, the two first poems are new, and they are. I just translated them yesterday, so sorry if it's a bit rough, um, because I wrote them in Spanish. Mm, I don't normally do that, but I decided that with this uh, work I'm, I'm working on the moment, I'm going to do it. I'm going to translate it in three languages, if need. Okay, so this is called The Barista Cycle. After the tube opens its doors, after the shopping center opens its doors, after opening the shutters and typing a code that opens the doors to my workday with suitable shoes, with my name on the label, I access my position, turn on the machines, represent the choreography of gestures. 
Across the corridor, a cardboard goat advertises the cheese section. An ungulated jump, like the ones that detach stones from the Mediterranean cracks over tables, pastries, and teacups is what separates me from lunch. My supervisor to the right tries to compensate with strict gesticulation the strict secondary role of the franchise. He slaps my hand. The milk doesn't have foam. I twist my tongue outwards. Frankly, earnest, enter, text, hear, bleat. I descend through the elliptical path of the shopping center, flaming like a summer bush on fire, hopping mad on the verge of giving the change at the till I step back down the escalators with my immense other. I nurse this thread-like order of entering and exiting, a mixture of foam and ashes sprinkles the yellow stones. I turn the frother on. For every latte on the surface with small wrist vibrations, I draw up a heart. For every chance that you turn up from the counter corner, I perceive a new imaginary. Around him, il bel viso, i belli occhi, cape d'oro, accelerate the hours of my contract. Although you're not the excuse for this, this is not a caprice. I was late. We bumped into each other in the underground and you blocked my way. What brand of bleach do you use? I don't have time to do my tax return, and if I sleep, how will it be with insurance? Dirty tiered cloths, glossed lips, wash the cloths, wash the hands, outline the lips. I move stealthily, impassable Durga, a utensil in each hand. I run my eyes over the syrups, my fingertips on the labels, Apricot, almond, strawberry, vanilla, hazelnut, banana. Viscosity flows. I remember all its names and lick its borders. My supervisor slaps my hand when I don't bend the milk jar in the milk frother enough to texturize it at 60 degrees. I support the weight of the cup on the plate with a teaspoon, the sugar, the kindliness of the biscotti. My body is cold and comes from the future. Not any telling works. Power outflanks. The habit of abuse is in the signifier. The search for your voice in other people's timber. I try my luck with a different tense. An altered trip, a damaged vocabulary, an all newness out of sight on the synaptic panel which lead up through trial and error, through trial and error, through trial and error, twisting and turning. Before stumbling against the underbrush, the underbrush we danced into subjective dances on the penis. Alice, your face in my sea, a tear. The incorporated language didn't have a body. But here's all wrong. I eat too much or not enough. Now I tremble imagining myself chattering about the weather with the clients, chattering about the weekly rota with my colleagues, chattering about the angle of the milk jar in the frother with my supervisor. My new chatty language doesn't identify with my old container. And I tremble in the relation to lose the distance for an informative lie is an instance. To lose the distance for a toxic murmur is an instance. To lose the distance for a syrupy memory of your abuse is an instance, is an instance, another instance of the tremor. My movements interrupted by reflection, reflection interrupted by its transcendence. The idea goes back to fulfillment, the coffee stain to the scalp, the scalp to touching. We are not at all imaginary. In each reverberation, we rinse off some consciousness. This is my working day, Didi, how long until he comes? We hum together, how long will it be, how long? The journey of the hands is time consuming, my productivity locked into the prison of this imaginary bleach and syrup, a chain of concepts. Laura, how long? The bubbles on the chill surface exhale liquid air. Our smiles are superimposed like stamps on a loyalty card. The centrings that join our milky voles are colloquial. I turn the handle, 
go, go, our evaporated dance, we hum along up, up to the payslip through the echoing ale. The bodies of the workers move without touching each other over the pavement that gathers our death cells like prickly rolling tumbleweeds. This is the Western of costume. Here syrups, cookies and pastries are branded flavored. Coffee is free trade. Milk doesn't have lactose. The voyage is lonely. I yawn as I sweep. Who cares if I finish now, comrade? We're being gobbled down by the futility of our shifts. I look for a job in the classifieds. In three days of training, you learn the basic skills. I am communicative. I went to school. I am available in three languages. The reinvention of oneself with the stale, the stale sandwiches before the tube closes its doors, before the shopping center closes its doors. We have switched off the coffee machine. We have washed the filters, the steam one. We have dusted off the, wo the wooden chairs and tables. We have turned on the dishwasher. We have replaced the milk bottles in the fridge, the syrups on the shelves, the cookies in the glass jars, the cakes on the display window, the biscotti in the drawer. We have moved away the products that were out of date. We have emptied the till. We have turned off the shop lights. We have closed the doors. We have put down the shutters. Let's go together to the staff room and do ourselves in the lockers. Name, footwear, ages, and step down to the tube. Me inhaling, you exhaling the smoke of a roll to end up on the sofa where the circadian periplus of the baristas ends. The uniform without tack is drying, hung in the bedroom. The leftovers from dinner are drying on the plate. The laundry holds the air in a plastic bag. Question, how long? The enveloping feel go grows with impression of the not named. In and out in the warehouse, physiological translations. A fox crosses the street with a sandwich wrapper. Let's try another tense test that doesn't end the relation in the dream. An altered journey, a change of tack in direction to oneself, a more adapted version to the circumnavigation that frames our horizon, a parable that no, no return ahead as she was, how was she, how will she come back as she was, I don't know my, myself, I can't remember. There were four points that needed changing in order to become as she should be, mainly I remember now these were the points. One two, three, and four. I analyzed them while I was enumerating them and I agree with myself. I nod to myself. I change what's necessary, what's inevitable, another subject I would dare to say, formerly playing on stranded vessels by the beach. She should present herself on a gleaming boat at her return. She should be like this from now on and until future change. Familiar jubilation, the shatter, opens. It's 6 a.m. This is not a caprice. Then I'm gonna read the second one that is called uh, Death. Uh, thanks, yeah. <laughs> death, uh, death, ang ang death Angles. Yeah. Here in the department store of the shopping center, getting ready for possible adversity, Layers of glowing plasma emit sensitive solutions. I stop in front of a one brand seller in the panoptic indecision. What flowers puppies children on the beach to buy? In the filtering of images through the retina, the bright colors of the tendentious, tendentious stats of price comparisons on our crystalline lenses press our reptilian switches. I stick my acetylate tongue out. I put a mint on the tip and lick. I'd rather not, but somehow I wanted that someone would want to convince me of something. So I dared. I turned on into an object and both me and Santiago exchanged opinions for a while about the functions, the menus, the inches of the screen, the sensor of movement. I wanted to know I'm here always. It's easy to use. I personalized my style with my finger and now I watch and discover what happens in parts of the earth that I had never heard of. How would it be without this hormonal disorder, without this solution? 
we carry the screen upstairs where we connect the electric circuit, blood clots on our calves, our illuminated future, the deterioration of particles to nanoparticles pass like waves in the movies, the taints on our eyes, dead angles of the system, fish and birds from the Pacific test the truth of the program, its vulnerability and fatality, test that doesn't end floating with the rest on the ocean, we are told by David Attenborough here on the BBC, here we are ready. Do I have time to read one more or shall I leave it there? Yes? Okay, uh, I, this is uh, the one published by, uh, with Crater, translated by Richard. And I read it once in January. It's called Enveloping Field. While fleeing syntax, suffered normality fate, the happiness and structured with elements of the continuum of mortars. Watch me as I shined a crystal. It wasn't the first scene, nor was what followed. The symbol came too late from my eyes. The image of the enveloping field which includes us, even if you disagree with the proposition, while the question of what to do with the impression remains. Warehouses, dead angles out of the system, transported from beyond, wrapped in scarves so they don't break down and you eat them. Although you've been told to press the buttons all night on your palate, your tense tongue seeks to bite everything. And no orders, no improvement on the metric system. Don't click the links, neither a model nor mannequin, nor correspondences and not the invasive image that you are yourself, a tremble imagining me. And callous or celebrated is the continuum of yourself and the experience of that which is imposed oil on the door hinges of the apocalypse, test that doesn't end the ocean in plastic, pass like the waves in the movies, microparticles the flex in your eyes, a test that doesn't end. At bath in the contrast of waste and not at night, the field includes us all. Chance brings to mind the black envelope, the impression that the store revives a memory, green grass in contrast with darkness. When I was closer to the insects, the diminutive of honey, I was very here, as in this hug. I remember it and share your intensity as we break the polypeptide chains. The wells take the other side. It is revolutionary love of the hormone which rises through the stagnant water against the ordered order of production. Our future shakes up from the oil up out of the dining room, wraps us up the mother load. During the earthquake, the walls trotting, the beauty in that in which you trust too much, too little. We're back now, wits in our present, the sugar on its way down peristalsis and let's stick to it skin to skin carry her through the enveloping field this primordial wheat image of us and the other and the decay towards which we are drawn this absence and also the joke heavier lighter laughter and that i was no longer my own subject nor in any poems when you called blank or in the bank i was working out the dates for the holidays with all the creatures of hades and how to accelerate the rotation of the earth to the car park, so these areas of Thanatos. In retrograde, we feed the reason indignant. Let's go, comrades, and paying mercy's tears black, intoxicate ourselves with tar scooped up from off of the beaches of Spain to stick us red with feathers as against the black rooster of Congress. We defined it, we know each other and our limits. Let's repeat then the sacred ring, the rising holy toad. Everything is okay. Freedom sings and falls and sings. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. That's, that was an absolutely wonderful reading. Thank you so much. Um, so. Our next reader, reader is Birna, if you are ready. Uh, could, could I be the next one? <laughs> I'll explain why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are the next one. 
I mean, after... Oh, absolutely. Uh, Richard, are you... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm at work. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> totally cool with me. If, if Richard is, is, is okay with that, if not otherwise... Uh, well, I, I, I just need to get my... I just printed the... Totally <laughs> I'm fine. Because I had lots of unpredictable... No or, or if you if you can wait two minutes, then I, yeah, I can wait because it seems like Richard is not okay. Back. So just just a uh, second, exchanging the um, resp duty with a with a baby or toddler rather. But by the way, Aggie, just in case some people might try to get in who I don't think they may have registered, I just they know the readers and I just sent them the Zoom. Uh, uh, I'm looking at the the queue. There's no one wanting to come in at the moment. Um, cool. But thank you. I, I'll I'll watch out for them. Thanks. Hi. Um, hi, Agnes. Are you ready for for me to read now? I think so because Virna has gone now to pick up her poems uh, from from a, from a, the printer's room. I think she's reading from the hospital actually. So if you're happy with that. Yeah, sure, we can go for it. Um, I'm going to try this. Not sure how to, but look, I'll just press on. Okay, so um, I'm going to read a few poems. Uh, medium of medium age, not the oldest of the old poems. I don't have anything particularly new at the moment, but they, these are things which are supposed to be um, coming forth in the Space Ode book, which is currently delayed indeterminately. But yeah, the first of these poems is called uh, John Lewis, a short one. Uh, John Lewis. At the disappearing point, as the sun quickly dips at sunset, capital reasserts itself, the shadow in the shadow of the shadows, in the midst of the just arrangement of labor, the monstrous petty bourgeois, the manager at work, or at the weekend visiting the sacred places, here and Peter Jones, the libidinal ego relating its exciting object. At 6 a.m., I found myself on Oxford Street, face already warm from the sun, the air still clear, bright patches scaling the walls, ashes and sparks between. The glowing orb of the past touched the land here and tore the world apart. And now the glowing orb of the future turns on its axis, the glowing orb of the future Lighting all ways, dispelling all shadows. Okay, that was John Lewis. Um, the second poem is called is called Kumar Sangakkara, after the Sri Lankan for the Sri Lankan cricketer. This is an ode, effectively, to Kumar Sangakkara. This is a longer poem. Um, basically about, uh, more or less about sports. Kumasangakara, equinox to equinox, and at summer solstice, we turn in ecstasy to the very green god, green god of sparkling water and gold, the quenching draught, the calming trill in summertime by the pool in the glade, gold, in the stores at Delphi. I woke up and it was already the afternoon session. The sun still soft that summer. The game moving on. One innings draws to a close and the sky changes. The clouds first torn up and then more quickly rolling in. In the third week of September, Pelop Sangakara subsides beneath the covers. In late March, in April, the lost king returns. Part one, you will fail. Running for the medal with your last breath stretching towards the line, spluttering on the sand, you too will recede 
and pass. These are some of the specific things that sport can bring to the project. Beautiful youths sometimes raised up to enormous wealth without regard to their parents' privilege, which is better than Oxbridge, though the managers are just as monstrous, fingers broken on the rungs, and though merit is an oppression. Loads of affect, lots and lots of people from lots of backgrounds all together, mostly agreeing at least that this activity they're watching, people engaging in, is worthwhile. People acting out the meaningless repetition of work, see baseball, miming work, but remember that all work is miming. Clearer understanding of surplus value, Roman Abramovich, Hieron the first tyrant of Syracuse, Maybe the opportunities to screw over the prawn cocktail marketing bastards and whatever aristocrats or whichever resource magnets, magnates, etc., are pyrrhic and their distractions, but at least there's some working through of the habits the victors will need as they take back the newspapers, flush out the vermin, the parabola. You can see its arc and it's almost only here so people see it now and again so people see it now and again otherwise what is there and all kinds of other parabolas the lines of beauty weaving their charm and beauty is revolutionary in itself youth and beauty though age and all the ways of being are as essential to the project but these things are here really and it's rare that anything so actual amidst the mummery practice breaking their heads though it's chthonic though their violence is there again in ours it shows us how obscene official gender is in this place at this time exquisite Ferenikos and his numerous advantages, a woeful depiction of racism in this place at this time. In spite of this, it is, or it seems to be, more diverse than the stock market, academia, or publishing, the media, the House of Lords, the bishops, and so on. It distracts, but overall, some goodness might come out of this show these young women and men their power, clean body, clear mind, playing golf a couple of times a week should be of some use to the pre-revolutionary body. But watching it or getting too into it ends up a distraction. The acting out of the dialectic, satisfying the instinct for struggle and stifling that which you might call the real impulse. But if all of the time you are playing hockey, you're always thinking about injustice, consciously comparing your moves and so on, or even watching it, thinking of how it's representing work or the dialectic, or preparing a coup d'etat, consider homosociality the whole time you're at the rugger, and it could start right here, and it really could. 30,000 excited up at Stamford Bridge would be a good place for it to start, tearing up the Fulham Road. Boris Johnson booed at the Oval in 2018. Maybe there's not fair play just now, and that's as it should be. No fair play for the rebel tourists or the administrators. The level playing fields are at Harrow and at Tonbridge. Would prefer to see them diving in the football, which is class war. And if you can afford it, then let them dive against you. The corrupt Yankees beanballing the soon to be streaking A's class war and then going on to the world series and the next season buying up those busted up players class war um this is now part two get, get through this uh, i dreamt i read this perfect 
lost novel, the first half of which was an account of an undergraduate working to get activists onto campus to use lecture halls for organizing. Then the second half was about coming to understand the self within the context of a revolutionary politics, the characters moving near one another and then past or spinning past wildly, but then finding one another. And the novel was fragmentary in a way that seemed to enact the utopian capacity of these desires. The structure turning around the point at which the characters ceased to articulate that something impossible to achieve and impossibility written into all the accounts, even at the beginning, but to live fulfilled and transcendent most persuasively off the page, the interminable possibility of the test match, of the championship stretching before us, people organizing kind and simple commingling free from oppressors, Villa Diodato without the egomaniacs. The scene with which the text ended had two people in a room and another on a telephone talking with one in the room, though the one in the room not on the phone and the one on the phone but not in the room were friends. And the one in the room was connecting the other two, one on phone, one in person, a Venn diagram. And if it had been a book with a telos, this would have been it. They'd be joined. The fabric of the universe would be rent and these united through their intermediary. But the text ended suddenly and perfectly. Okay, uh, part three. Part three. Just give us a second. Okay, part three. I'd like to take Kumar Sangakara's dream cover drive for a walk along the South Bank. I take his sumptuous cut shot, the scepter of righteousness, to a show and after for a drink. We hadn't him for long. Final autumn sherries, those cuts, late flurry of centuries, and his pull shot. Square off the wicket on the offside, Kumar Sangakara's shots, the calming whir of the super sopper in summertime, all the best things about the game. Imagine if Sangakara came out for the revolution, Sangakara the helmsman, the mist coming off the dialectic like off a horse in winter. But probably he won't and he says he won't. Or if he leads it, he'll come, it'll be some nationalism or other gym crack. Sangakara signing off on the room booking. Sangakara signing off on the room booking as the campus goes under. I abate, and your days are numbered too. Capos mute through the hiring freezes. You left it too late to resist and you will be washed away. Oxford is rubble. Smoke rises from the ruins at Pharma. Uruboros VCs, your days are numbered. Like the summer passing, last strawberries and cream, last Pims, your days are numbered, meat eaters and Evian. All the worst things about this place, the pressing, maddening grief for the summer that's always ending and the grief at the green shoots ever lessening at spring, a handful less of us at nets. Your days are numbered, the Chelsea headhunters who smashed up bookmarks the putrid alliance of football lads. I falter with the turning of the seasons. Storm swift Sangakara is gone. La passionaria finally gone many years after the war. 
those lost under the flagstones in the middle of things, swamped by the tide, sands settle while the kelpie rocks dry. With her dog, the vicar would have seen the still water sober after the passing in the leaf littered morning, but she did not come and none will see it. None will see the structure fail as the hurricane builds. Not even the administrators will escape. Not lie retching on the sand next morning, shattered on the bleached reefs, desperate figure, fingers losing the masthead, no more gallant rearguard at Chelmsford, the tumbling panic of the storm upon us, the tearing flesh and the timbers headlong into the silence. The mud drying now, he's gone. Chip trays wither on the wind, grass pressed down in the fields and mud drying under the duck boards, scorecards and blunt pencils trodden into the soil. Okay, that was the, that's the end of the Kumar Sangakara poem. Do you, do you know roughly how many minutes I've done? Is that 20 minutes yet? Oh, I got... Sorry, I think you've got time, Richard, if you want to continue. I've got uh, one more uh, shorter one. Okay, oh, go ahead. Um, this, this one is uh, called Laura Brannigan, about Laura Brannigan, the singer. Um, it starts with a quote from Herman Melville. Nothing abides, the river stops, the sun sets, living is dying, the mountains melt into the valleys, the zodiac is but a revolution. In all of this, am I to prove the one stable thing? That's Melville. Okay, so part one of the Laura Brannigan poem. Piano, piano, I wake up sweating, cut down from the column, from the fleshy coil revolving. Aoi, the song that remains for all those suddenly dead after long misery, expired under a stone, assassinated while on trial for corruption in Valencia, for those who died unnecessarily under homeopathy, for the billion lambs upon the spit, the cricketers who killed themselves, those who accidentally got out of the wrong side of one of the old trains into the path of another train, or thought they saw a ghost of their future self and jumped out between stations or feared exposure and hanged themselves or died alone. Aoi, the deserving dead, blown to bits in the Challenger disaster, all alone, even together, locked in an oven at the fiberglass factory, faithless street dogs frozen down, down from a roof after tinkering with an aerial. Those inside and just outside of things, best wishes for your journey. On this side, I hear only scuffling, John Muir's nature sliding under the crust and into the mud. Aoi. I think that maybe this is someone calling Jesse. I don't, I don't know how to turn off her. Turn this phone off, Jesse. Yeah. Not that annoying. Mm. What is it? Yeah. Oh, they gave up. Oh, I wasn't there. Okay, preserved for the ages on YouTube. Um, okay, so I think we right. Aoi. Aoi. as if events were knowable. If I started shouting out, would she hear me up beyond the cloudy massif? 
behind the steam train on its grand curve, high among the orders of the angels. And if she did and turned that practiced and perfect organ towards me, you know, I think that I should sh simply shrivel a tiny portion of a person, a bee upon the breeze. Part two. Laura Branigan's voice is handsome and impossible, as wide as a pampas, as mad as Byright. Two kinds of emptiness, the echoing emptiness in the underpass, the hollowness of all things, as fitting as a church in the countryside, water without a desert, whether from work or straight out of bed, from the steps of an altar, dynamite, terrible in its power, the low horizon and the damp under, the blue in the sky and higher the frost, the nimbus piercing mountain tops and the grumbling yeti, the mountain promises unending ascent while the monsters lament behind the unreachable ridge, the lovely Uramaki, the terrible wasabi. She was a manhole cover, the exocet of unconstraint, the voice the bridge and tunnel, down like a rock. The arena, the stone mind and the superego, never stopping, not considering, and always considering. Laura Branigan posits the breathless ego soaring while yet she performs the bitter bounds of control. Okay, this is the third and the final part. Long Island Sound. A quiet sandwich on the promenade, clouds on the horizon. Walt Whitman's beard forms and Laura's face above, smiling as in a dream. Before, like all clouds, she's gone. Beauty will lead us to sympathy. At the turn of the stair, softly like the circling swift, the loud but secretive wren in its bubbling absence flies above the wind but cannot rise. The late triumphs at Vigna del Mar, feeling a little softer. But in the evening on the recliner, the divided world fades. The shock of loving mellowed. The cool Pacific, the marine layer, rolling in as the seaborne laser show comes into view one last time. B wavering towards the hive, the autumn coming and the work done. I'm a bee buzzing home to die, the queen ready in her cage for winter. The sound, the sandwich, the bee, all waits for the right voices. Wonderful, Richard, and absolutely breathtaking. And you know what? Uh, I think you've, you're, which was that part when you kept repeating and then the, the, the phone was coming in as well as if you were like triggering itself. But anyway, it worked to me. So. How are you? Uh, fantastic. Really, really enjoy that. Thank you. Um, so, Vina, have you found the poems? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I'd like to apologize because I had lots of um, foreseen um, things happening today and uh, I'm, I'm at work. It's going to be interesting, a kind of live performance from the NHS. <laughs> so I'll read some poems at the end about my, about my work. Uh, and I'm going to start with poems um, uh, of my new collection, which will be published um, by Carnival Press. It's called uh, My Doll and I. So it's, um, the doll is like a double transvestite and it's like a puppet. So I kind of dialogue with this doll in different clothes and so it's a bit, there's a bit of a surrealistic uh, flavor. And the point, okay, let's start. A face new, unexpected, 
eyelashes of a drag makeup Bauhaus styled. I have fun double doming with Justine, dressing you up in your burlesque costume. Thus, you turn into a gracious and graphic being. And how many layers has this evening, shiny as your collar of a mysterious devote, so silent, hidden behind the eyeshadow's shades? The scissors shaping the fabric, the textures, and the tone of this fantasy. Too fluid, this delicate chambermaid of the parallel rooms. How swiftly she moves in the romantic rustle of PVC and lace, treading softly with her patent leather shoes between corridors and textiles, camouflaged behind the servile senorita sitting decorous like the boy she carries inside, so polite, in the waiting rooms of time, designing interiors, almost mummified by invisible bondage tapes. I pass by the club wearing a balaclava. The candies have exploded already, several having escaped in spaceships. My muse is a non-binary rubber doll with a black mask and icy blonde ponytails. I pump up her breasts, her hips. I paint her eyes with a green pencil. I dress over my cat suit, a latex corset. We are extreme and incognito, my doll and I, tired, melted dressed for pleasure, in a fugitive moment between shadows and the northern lights. Your dream of going to the ball in a black swing dress with red polka dots, your weak, long blonde hair with dark boots. How do you pay tribute to the 1950s, the burgundy petticoat pairing your shoes and the clutch bag. I'll be your biker with my black top, my pencil skirt in vinyl, my face concealed behind a veil hanging from my head with red appliques to match your dress. Our images made of mirrors marching inside this fantasy kingdom. I lead you with a medieval corset with brass buckles to protect my chest. My petticoat is fluid, my boots are patent. You are astonished, smiling with a full circle red, red dress, the Alice band holding your gray blue hair. As you cross the ballroom of your chimerical castles, fetishizing the female body in fragments of imaginary lands, tied up in dreamy costumes. Here is the doll with her silent presence, molding the form. I manipulate her body in impossible positions, deconstructing boundaries with her torso, trust and potent. She is my puppet, I pull her strings in distorted projections, blurring fiction with commands, sentences resembling a body with double perspectives. I changed him, her, into a doll. I changed myself into a voyeur who sits and watches. To distort the gaze, a close up into her heart, Viewed from behind, the doll looks back over her shoulder. She plays coyly with her hair. The ambivalent love displaced in time. A photographic journal that now she recalls compulsively. A girl turned into fetish. The puppet that one day she refused to be. The reality is blurred. 
what is truth or fiction. You are growing up instead of Mary Jane shoes. You wear stilettos and you check yourself in front of the mirror with a short black lace dress. I dream of Siamese girls who are separated at birth. I am the one with a port wine stain on the forehead and it's me the doll facing the mirror with your collar and ponytails showing off with lace underwear and a half open black negligee. I had a lot of fun when I played with my rubber doll, but our costumes have ripped off in unsuspected places. What could I do with her dismantled members, with pieces of plastic, with her inhuman skin? Then I mended my cat suit, I wore her mask, I became a cyborg in her absence. And I'm gonna read some poems. Um, I mean, interestingly, reading from the NHS, this, um, I work in an eating disorders unit. So this poem I wrote about a, about a year ago was close to Christmas. Um, and I've, I've been working here for more than a year. And then I'm gonna read another poem related to my work and a couple of poems I wrote um, in lockdown. Avoidance closeness, when he sent her message, she detached. Say to her this is the decision we've made, what she misses during snacks. We'll give her bowls of compact. Some are wearing Christmas jumpers, the woman with long brown hair and funny tights taking notes. A journal is neat with symmetrical notes. Why are you afraid of completing your meals? The last episode frightened me. The dream where she was swimming in a pool during winter, losing control of restrained emotions. Scenes of dark, as Gina Tiedemann's blouse, the black background with feathers matching the earrings, fight or flight. Intimacy, anorexia is your comfort zone, but you binge eventually, secretly, walking through gloomy corridors with floral armchairs. Confabulation. They sat at the infirmary dining table for the meeting. They wore masks, gestural movements. Is the language of masks intransitive? She doesn't remember the accident. The hippocampus was injured at the beginning of the pandemic. Sitting at the table without a mask in front of the staff, as if she were naked and vulnerable, her mouth and nose exposed, the covered faces, seated at geometrically precise distance, are fixed on her. Her perplexity is not neurological, it is real. Is this a bad dream, kind of inquisition? Anterograde amnesia dates me nothing. There's news about this virus everywhere. She wants to go outside to smoke. She doesn't remember being admitted. Her body changed. Before she walked through the hall like a Giacometti sculpture, swinging long arms. Now she needs new, larger clothing, size eight. She remembers that she was in a bookstore in New York in August 2019, but that was much earlier. She thinks my name is Dr. Maria because I'm from Latin America. On the day of the accident, I went down the street with neck pain after a sudden and recent spasm in my back. I was dizzy, there were shocks running down my arms, and I had a neurologist's bad feeling about my spine. I thought I would lose my ability to move. When I reached the underground, I had palpitations and I was sweating. I don't know how much time I spent on the tube. I was out of touch with reality. I was looking at some people with masks and I was afraid. I concentrated on my breathing. On the way here, it calmed down. It was a panic attack. I arrived in time for the meeting. It was a long day, which culminated in the accident. We ran. I remember the screams, the anorexic girl who was so dehydrated that she cried without tears. But she survived and forgot everything. The following week, quarantine began. Your own personal lockdown. You've been in lockdown for years. It's a double lockdown, you and you. 
Her portrait was half painted and locked in some faraway basement. The toilet was dressed in an Ellis costume with a Barbarella wig full of artificial snakes. Like Medusa hair, trying to remember how you were depicted in those sketches. You're calling someone and you're afraid of gazing in the mirror. You can be turned into stone. The room is small, confined, with piles of costumes blocking the corridor. There is someone sleeping, bounded on your bed. Then the door opens. A black panther enters the room, walking slowly. She has come to free your wild spirit. Now that it has cooled down, you can start to thaw. Your habit of standing as a serious human furniture, acrylic red, like coagulated blood. Red wine serves as an anesthetic. When walls get off track, it is a catastrophe. Keeper of secrets with the titanic on your, on your back, with a gag in your mouth. Who untied the bondage around the shoulders? The sudden throw of ataxia at the target of the arms, the sharp arrow in the shadow, the shock of breaking free at the crossroads, possessed by Oshossi, and then the chemical paralysis, paralysis, listening to polyhedral music. From one end to the other, you wander in lunar craters, astonished. But there is no point in restricting ice, wine, truth, and blood melt inside the acrylic. Mm. I think I still have quite a lot of time, don't I? My poems are quite short. Um, um, well, continuing this uh, medical mixture of medical, I'm going to read uh, two or three poems from uh, my collection called Sweet One Three Six, which is about patients, you know. Um, Section 136 is when people who come to a psychiatric hospital detained by the police or so psychiatry. Um, and this was my first collection related to some kind of medical theme. Um, and actually, one of, one of the poems of Suite 136 uh, one or two that they're in the anthology that I just mentioned in the beginning. Just kind of portraits of patients, of situations at my work. If you told me you were an angel, I wouldn't judge you. An angel is a sort of innocent. I'm an individual, I'm not a typical person. So the dose of the medication shouldn't be typical. It is affecting my angel rights. My naivety is being abused. In reality, I was diagnosed with demoralization and uselessness. The illness is no longer there. In light is induced state, I am blissful. Thinking has helped my mental state. And I believe that talking is the way to solve things. I remember that the police brought me here. They saw me walking around in circles around the block. I was trying to find something. I was, a walk, I was walking around thinking on what I was concerned about. I spent a long time walking when Sunday morning came. The medication is so powerful that if I want to see a film at two o'clock, I can't. Most of the time I don't want to take it. Never mind films and movies I don't want to miss. Don't want to miss. I'm not able to think sharply as I could. I see things as if I, if I were watching a cartoon, even with cannabis, you get rid of it after a while. I want to get some money at the cash point to buy clothes, a black jacket, a gray jacket, or put the money back in the safe. You think you're smarter than the doctors. That's what my dad says. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm afraid of World War Syndrome. I'm afraid of vampires. I'm afraid of death. I can hear the vampires. They talk like people. Their faces frighten me. I can hear angels, demons, vampires, and wolves. They're talking about me. They came to save me. 
the windows are closed and angels can't come in. She thinks I'm a vampire and she follows me with a stake in her hand. And the last one. You're dressed like the Project, Project Mona or Leopardy. I won't tell you more, miss. So you think I am a neuroscientist sex kitten dressed in animal print? Maybe you're right. Psychiatry is just a technique of mind control. Science a narrative delirium based on evidence. I do feel for your somatic delusions. From femme fatale to junior doctor, can't give you leave. Are you going to report me? Are you offering me tea? You move so quickly, you are so stylish. You're the hipster of the world, the great traveler of the public transport. Then you trip on the same path with a hidden drinking problem, and you come back bleeding. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bina, and, and, and th the wonderfully eerie, eerie stuff it is. And I remember um, the, the hospital poems from, from uh, your London reading as well. Uh, thank you, and also thank you for agreeing to read after such a hectic day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had a crazy day and I didn't have much time and I said, you know what, I'm just stay at work and I have a child at home. Would be like, <laughs> and you are you're still at work at your workplace in the hospital. It, it, but it's 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 interesting. It's like a natural performance, which I was <laughs> expecting. <laughs> it's yeah. it's amazing. Thank you, uh, uh, and lovely yes. to see you again. <laughs> okay, so uh, we've got uh, one more poet to read tonight. Uh, Iris Colom. Iris, are you ready? Yep. Can All you yours. Or yours. Okay. So for this first uh, piece, uh, I have a request. Um, unless it's not possible for you, could you turn off the light uh, in the room you're sitting in? Whether your camera is on or off, but I suggest you put your camera on for this part. Um, if you're able to and don't mind. All the lights. All the lights. All of it, okay. Yeah. Open a book and line it with newspaper. Place yourself as flat as you can on the page. Folding properly is a great skill to have. Close the book and weigh it down. Heavy books work well as weight. Store the pile in a warm, dry place and check on yourself daily. You'll get used to being flat. You'll enjoy it. Measure the dimensions of your frame and the eventual self you want. Make sure you have enough material to get a grip to pull and stretch it. There are many different ways to fold. Open a book in a warm, dry place. Start with the side of the self closest to you and fold it in. Folding properly is a great skill to have. Insert three staples in the center of the frame. Close the book. Make sure to keep an even weight. Any part left in free air is likely to collapse. At first glance, it may seem somewhat tricky, but by learning the right technique, start with the longest side of the self closest to you and pull and stretch it. Store the pile in a warm, dry place. Close the book and check. You'll get used to being flat. You'll enjoy it. Depending on the self that you are pressing and the drying conditions, switch to one of the unstapled sides and give yourself a good solid pull. It can take from just a couple of days to a few weeks to completely dry out. Fold over 
and insert two staples, attaching yourself to the frame. Drying yourself quickly can help preserve color. Try placing yourself next to a radiator or central heating boiler if you have one. You'll get used to being flat, you'll enjoy it. You'll go in and out of rooms even when the door is closed. Go back to the first side. Try to lay yourself out in a way that looks natural. Make sure that each side remains visible. At first glance, it may seem somewhat tricky, but by learning the right technique, you can fold quickly and efficiently, wrap yourself all the way around the frame, pull a piece of loose self and staple it down, work from your center staples out to each corner. Each side includes essential features. Folding properly is a great skill to have. Newspaper works well as an immediate covering. It is fairly absorbent and has antifungal properties. Try placing yourself next to a radiator, the parts around the corners should still be quite loose. You'll tighten them up later. Even warming the newspaper before using it helps reduce moisture. There are many different ways to fold. If you're trying to press a bulk yourself, add extra paper and card to ensure that every part is being directly pressed. This will avoid parts shriveling up. You'll get used to being flat. You'll enjoy it. Folding properly is a great skill to have. Continue pulling and stapling pieces. Go slowly, stretching a little bit at a time from your center staples out to each corner. The self is ready once it no longer feels. You'll get used to being flat. You'll enjoy it. You'll go in and out of rooms even when the door is closed just by lying down and sliding through the crack. At first glance, it may seem somewhat tricky, but learning the right technique. Tuck one side of the corner under the other. The dry itself may be quite brittle, so be careful when moving it, pulling tight, making sure each egg is, 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 is just, just even. This is the final tightening, the most important part. Traditionally, pressed selves used to be sewn onto thick paper. You could attempt that if you enjoy sewing and have suitable paper, but glue works perfectly well. There are many different ways to fold. The dried self may be quite brittle. Sometimes it's helpful to make a little slit, even warming the newspaper before using it to help stretch it tight and make it flush with the sides in the corners of the frame. It can take just a couple of days. If you're trying to press multiple selves, at once. Use kitchen roll to create an extra layer. You could also consider cutting the selves in half. You'll get used to being flat. You'll enjoy it. You'll go in and out of rooms even when the doors close. It can take just a couple of days. You don't want rough staples around the edges while you're working. Go around the self and pound all your staples with a hammer to make sure everything is flush with the frame, folding properly. Even when the door is closed, the right technique, check the tightness of the self once you're finished. Flip it over and tap it with your finger. It should sound like a drum and feel quite taut. Close the book and weigh it down. Heavy books work well as weight. Store the pile in a warm, dry place and check on yourself daily. After stretching, it's important to let yourself rest. Not all selves are easy to press. Some take a long time to dry. Some tend to spoil and crumble. Once the self is nice and dry, you can carefully remove it. Appearances of struggle only pathetic. The king is reborn and existence sharp. Eternal calumny through the series, the music which comes rarely giving. Live, laugh, laugh, and then the damned without making or noticing favorite. Was the invention denying the text no years in which refusing to leave? No writer extremely because of the sea, perhaps, perhaps to associate.
between the folds where once I told when I say I is only part the fog so thick I hardly stand my body my one my sweet I'll remember the name I gave it I asked my three palm bleeds or three palms deep when I say I is only part it never does quite dry my one my sweet my only sleep I'll say it as I dive the fog is only hardly one a shiver once I light and yet I did, I gave, I left, palms to fold to keep, I lost, back where I stood or last I tried, what if I find it, what if I break, dim lit morning, back of the throat, one sliver short, one take, what if I find it's only sleep, hold still, sit tight, sigh till it lands, my peace, my peace, my horror to it, never really dries. Under the fog I lent, how light, how light I lent, I once. It's only sleep, my darling one, so sweet, my palms to peace. What's mine is mine, I will not trip. Always a joke I cannot fix. If there's a will, I'll frame it, I'll pin my one, my only, my sleep. And if my longing fades, my rage, back of the throat in which I placed under the name, my palms all take at once, there was I lost. My one, my sweet, my only peace, my darling one, I'll sigh. The name is only just a part of fog too once I light. And yet I did, I named, I let throat to hold to peace. I lost, it's only sleep, it's only sleep. My palms are drawn, I'll cough it out, I'll tear right through. It's only sleep or far too much to dream. When I say I, wild with the words, palms ready, drawn, sore, spent, a skin to breathe through, sickly smooth, I'll take it in, I'll pull. It's only sleep, I'll say, as I tear till it gives, and as I tear I'll smile my palms are heavier heavier fair what's mine is lie is only part in which that dream is just a fog never enough to rip and as I face my one my own I know I'll remember I gave under the name in which I place my palms too thick to rake it's only sleep it's only sleep and yet I sit I wait my one, my sweet, my only peace, my darling one, I'll say, I did, I gave it only sweet and far too much to rip, I lost, there is a name six inches deep, six inches from the ground, my palms released, my body won, what's mine is all I find, the way it grows between the folds, one take, one sliver skewed, when I say I and watch it part of peace or last I moved, it's only sleep, I'll say, as I tear till it gives, I'll say it as I slice. The name is only just a part, my only darling sweet. My darling one so one so much so sweet I cannot scream. It's only sleep, it's only sleep. And as I tear I'll sigh, though fog is only hardly one, I shiver as I light. And with my heart just a piece, an inch or two to spare, my palms to crush her, if I must, with all the names I'll stand. Under the fog I lent, how light, and yet I won't I land. It's only sleep, and yet I sit, how could I let how light? To rip my sleep out through the fog, what if I find your last I froze? I cannot spread my palms collapse, it never can be both. My body one, my one, my own, as only sleep can fold. The name is only just a part, an inch of all I told. My one, my sweet, I'll say I'll heave, I'll say it as I land. It's only sleep, my darling one, so sleep, I'll one, I'll heave. If there's a will before I trip, I hardly feel the weight. Without a name what I would give without my palms to break Morning slipping off the ground, my body sickly smooth Would I, could I quite so light my body once removed My one, my sweet, the fog can't keep, I'll say it as I smile The name my one is just a trick, a skin I won't, I rip Beyond which wanting once I stop clean cuts till it removes, in which my owner once I told fall too far to pace I lost, and through my rage my palms to bleed, my only one, my sweet. When I say I is only part to sleep, I cannot dream. My one, my own, though once I fold, I'll say it, I won't break.
What if I find my horror might a skin I cannot shake, in which my palms I while I tear, I shiver at the sight. It's only sleep, my darling one, a sleep to peace I'll heave. My one, my sweet, my so my sleep with all the words I'll make. Only this once my willing peace a name, it still it shakes. It's only sleep I tore, I told, hold still my one, my rage. What's mine is lie, my body might, a skin I won't, I hate. Between the folds where I still hold, I hardly feel the break. When I say I is only part, a name is all it takes. Aesthetic part, sacrifice the vital process, how it orders suffering. Closer to the gesture, the discovery of not even an object in the beginning. Petrify the bloodshed against the tongue. I am swamped to compromise this gesture. Searched every moment he doesn't see in the afternoon, and I had doubts. When a phone rings and it has to be yours, you've got a place to go when a phone rings and it has and you go. When a phone rings, you've got a place, you've got a place and you go and you come home. The lights, the lights are out and it's. When a phone rings, you've got a place, you've got a place to go when a phone rings, a phone rings and you go and you come home, the lights, the lights are out, and it's, and it's too late for home, and it's not yours. When a phone rings, and it has to be yours, and it's that guy again asking if you're gonna fuck off, fuck off without, without saying, without saying this time when a phone rings, and it has to be yours, and I'm not ready, but you are, and that is really all it takes when a phone rings, and it has to be yours, although, it's never you calling to say when a phone rings and it's not yours and you're not calling and you won't say and really, really who's to who's to say these days when a phone rings, although it never does and now it's not, is not, it's time, not time, it's just the weather, the weather these days, these days, these days, these days, days, days falling out, days when a phone rings, days falling in, days, and it has days to place and days to keep and days where it won't be today, days in between, between those days, days to call and days to wait and days and days and days without, days to skip and days to spill and days beyond the days to follow these, days not to go to stop, to stop when you stop, days stop, stop, days stop, you stop, you, you hang up. When a phone rings, and you have crashed a car you never owned, and you have lied a lie you never told. Days which can't account for you, days you wait for without scope, days you long for just to cope, or days to play between those days, days to fall flat, rip out, fall back, days to get, get up, get up, get up, get up to days, get up to days, get up to days again, days to remember, days to remember the days you tried, I couldn't see, or saw 
little too much between days to fall back on on those days days you still days you could days you could take and don't they spent they spent days trying days waste days trying to waste the days when the phone rings The call is almost you, but I just can't quite reach in time to say that it's too late again to call. Days without reach, days without grip, days where the light goes can't. Where is my invoice? Where is my day? Where is my day within your day? Where does my day start? Days checking days or passing days, grasping for days and other days and days to watch, just checking you received my last few days. Days of running out of days and days and days and days to drown when the phone rings and it has and it has to be you and it can, 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 certainly can be you again and it is when a phone rings and it and has come up come up come up for days again days to count on days to count as they or days i do forget is that today is that today okay okay then days to feel and days to watch days to watch and days to run days to come and days to stick days to sorry so sorry these days are not what you signed up for there there you go there will be more more days or just another day after the day after the day after what what's in a day what's in a day what is my day to you where is my day and how was that uh, let me know when you know, you know when you know, you'll know when you'll know when I've, I've stopped, never, never can. I wouldn't want to, wouldn't do your day, not your day, my day, my day to wait now. Give it a day, give it a day, give it a day, give, give, give in. These days, these days, I didn't mean, I meant to say, I, I meant to say these days, sorry, oh, so, sorry, dear. Was that your day? I just, day, I just didn't see it. I, sorry, I, sorry, I could, couldn't, didn't, didn't, didn't call. The day before the day, before the day, before the day, until it's been, can't say when the phone rings and it has, and it has to be you, it has to be you. It often is these days. So it has, so it has to be you again. And it is, it is, it is you. Again, it is, again, it's you. Hello? Thank you so much for listening. Um, and I just wanted to say that the second poem I, uh, I read from the book is uh, from an anthology published by Zeno Press, uh, which is called uh, Zahir, Desire and Eclipse. Um, and yes, thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Iris. That was mesmerizing. But I don't think we've, we've we've had anything like this over the past four months <laughs> within the series. Can I just stay in the darkness? I quite like this. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, lovely to see you again. And thank you um, uh, for all the other poets, uh, Virna, um, uh, Richard, and uh, Jess. Uh, 
uh, for the reading. I'm going to stop the recording now.